Forget the subtlety. Just give me a sign. So, what are you trying to say? Video is sponsored by Maso, makers of the Maso CNC controller. Eight hardware and software package to run your machine with no PC required. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Now a little while ago I promised I would engrave some lettering into this sign here. It's already got the chains and everything attached to it, ready to hang up. So all it needs is for me to do the engraving. So I'm going to take you along for the ride and show you how I do it. So the first step in this is to take a photo and for that I'm going to use my cell phone. So for this project I measured the machinable area of the wooden sign and I created an oval. The measured area was 440mm across by 240mm up and down. I now take that photo of my piece of wood and I want to scale it so that it fits onto the oval. Can be a little bit fiddly, but it's well worth taking the time to get this right. needs to be a little bit bigger and that looks pretty good I've got the right width and it looks like the right height so I'm pretty pleased with that now it's important when you're doing this that you are actually moving the picture and not the oval the oval needs to have its center point right here at x0 y0 right in the center of the oval and what we're doing is we're moving this piece of wood so that it's right in the center. And of course, we can easily measure across and up and down and find the center point of this piece of wood, which we're going to use as our reference. So next we need to add some letters. And here are the letters that I want to machine. As you can see, they look pretty good. They're nicely centered on my piece of wood here. But here's the interesting thing, if I turn off that bitmap layer and turn on my oval, they are not in the center of the oval. So again, it's important this oval's only job is to locate the center of the piece of wood so that everything can be referenced from that. But if I went to the trouble of centering this in my oval, it wouldn't look right when I machined it. Now that I've got this done, all I do is create a VCARV file for my letters. So I'll select the letters, go VCARV. I'm going to use my 90 degree V bit and I'm going to put a start diameter of 0.5 millimeters. That means it's going to machine this here half a millimeter deeper than it normally would. And we'll be taking care of that shortly I'll call this letters and I'll calculate it so let's give this here a quick preview and there it is it's machined up our letters and they look pretty good there now as I said I machine that a little bit deeper than I normally would so what I've done now is I've made another toolpath and that's this one here. You can see I've created a square that goes around my piece of wood and I'm going to use that to create a pocket. So I'll come over here to a pocket and this time I'm going to use a 12mm end mill and I'm going to use a cut depth of half a millimeter. I'll call this one here level and I'll calculate. 
I also need to turn off the last pass because I don't need a last pass profile. I'm also going to use a raster cut for this. And there's our tool path there. So let's have a quick look at what happens when I preview this part, tool path. You can see it's cutting down our piece of wood here and it doesn't appear to be making any change to these letters. But watch what happens when the cut's finished. There. The letters got slightly smaller. This is what it would look like if I was to V-carve it normally without a start depth. So I'm going to use this leveling cut to both flatten my material if needed and to clean up the surface of the material when it's finished. So now for the fun bit. Let's see if it works and let's do some cutting. So this is exactly the sort of job that I made my hold down table for. A piece of material that is oddly shaped. I can't clamp it using my standard clamps. They just won't work. I want to V-carve the other side of it, but unfortunately I can't hold it down even with the vacuum table because this is the back. And you can see here, there's a slight dish in this piece of wood. And there's a snipe on this end where it's gone through a thicknesser. And um, that's just the least of its problems there. It's dished all over the place. So the first thing is I want to flatten it. So by running a ruler over it, I found that this is the lowest spot. So I brought my cutter over, set it down onto the spot here, and set that to zero. I'm now going to machine this surface flat. That'll give me a holding surface I can use on the vacuum table to machine the other side. Well, now it's time to put theory into practice. I've put the material down on my vacuum table as squarely as I can, and it's looking pretty good. I've marked the center of my wood, and I've zeroed the cutter to that point. Let's see what happens. So I applied some undercoat to the lettering and now I'm going to apply black paint into the grooves. I'm trying to be careful not to get it into uh, out onto the surface if possible and more importantly try and not get it into these cracks because that will cause problems when I do my next operation. last part of this project is I need to run a flattening pass over the top. The top should already be pretty flat, but I'm just going to take a mere skim which will remove any hint of paint here. Hopefully it won't cause me any chip out and uh, it should clean this all up for me. While it's sitting on the vacuum table here, I might as well make use of it and get the sander out. At least it'll hold it in place while I do the sanding. And there we have it, the completed sign. I couldn't be happier. It's come out exactly as it showed in my CAD software. How good is that? So good, in fact, I wouldn't mind keeping it myself. Uh, I'll, I'll be right round with it. 
Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my website, www.cncnuts.com. In the meantime, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you later. Cheers. I had a sign to deliver.